Okay, so I've got all my different parts in. They're all on different layers. If I want to give myself a little bit more space to see the layers, I can drag them up. So I see my background with this, has my sketch. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different layers. Some of them from the same reference. You know, the eye separate from everything else. Now, I'm going to use the metaphor. Actually, I have more than eight. I have ten. I'm going to use the metaphor of building a car. What's the most important part of a car? No one can agree, but I'm going to say it's the engine. The engine is the most important part of the car. Without an engine, it doesn't go, right? So the most important part of a character design is the head. The head is the thing we look at because it shows us where that creature is going, where they're facing, if they're a threat or not, if they're cute or not, you know, all that stuff that evolutionarily we care about when we come in contact with another living thing. So I'm going to find all my head references and start to build those together. So it might be for the nose, might be for the eye, might be for this thing that I want to add on to the head. I want to turn all those on. Know what those are. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five different references the amount you need for the assignment just for the head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select each of those layers by holding down a command and clicking on the layers itself until they're selected. And then I'm going to use the grouping feature, which is at the bottom of the layer window. It's a little folder. That's going to put them all into a folder. It's called group one. Now all those references for the head are in group one. And just to be nice and organized, I'm going to label that group the head. So this is the head team. It's like the team at Ferrari that hand builds each engine, right? Because if the engine's wrong, why work on the rest of the car? So if the head is wrong, why work on the rest of the creature? So now I'm going to work within this folder. I'm going to use my move tool with auto select on. And I'm going to design this head. So the first thing I want to do is the eye. I want to put the eye on the head, and I don't want it just wherever the eye was for my reference. I want it where I want it for my creature. So I'm going to move the eye down into the side a little bit so that it looks like the head is a little bit more tilted towards us instead of just in straight profile. It's not great to have creature design heads in strict profile, right? We want to see them tilting towards us a little bit which is also why this bill is better referenced than this bill, and this is better referenced because it's tilting towards us a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to take the jaw. I'm just rough placing, and I'm going to hit Command-T so I can rotate it, and I'm going to right-click within the transform box, and I'm going to distort it and get it to kind of work with the angle and anatomy, yes, bless you, of my creature. Now to do this, it can help while you're in the middle of a transform, you have the transform box, you can still take the opacity down on the layer. So that helps me see, okay, I want to distort it, I want to taper this edge, I want to thin it on this side, maybe I want to play with the perspective, tilt it back, Distort it again. That's just right-clicking within the transform box. And then I want to, let's see, skew it. Up, and then perspective it again. <laughs> it is playing with all these different features. I'm trying to get the edge of that mouth to get down there. And then ultimately, well, I'll try to distort one more time. There we go. And then ultimately, you can warp it, right? This is all organic material. So warping it makes it, gives you the most flexibility, like we used in our exercises. It allows you to push and pull it like it's cookie dough you're rolling out. All right, fun. Now I'm going to make it 100% opacity again. Now the problem is that covers up my eye, right? So maybe I just move that down underneath my eye. 
and I start to get a sense. These are not uh, placed finally, right? They are not color corrected. They are not image adjusted yet, but they are roughly placed. But if I want to get rid of that crocodile eye, it's bugging me. I can just go ahead and cut that out. That eye could be your, uh, your thermal. Yeah, you could do a lot with it. We're going to be learning lots of, of ways to composite. Okay, now I want to do the back of the head because my reference, it's got that weird thing on the back of the head. It's kind of cool and alien. So I'm going to command T this. and play with its scale. If I want to hold down shift, I can squish it, squash it a little. If I want to warp it, and the hardest thing is I want to make it look like it's turning around and you can't change the angle that significantly but I can do a few things. So for one, once I cut it out, I can duplicate it and make this almost more like antlers at the back of the head. So there's two of these flowers coming out instead of just one in the center, because I can't make that angle match the angle of the head, right? But I can use it at its native angle. You'll see what I mean. Okay, next I have this piece. And if I want to use that, so I'm going to transform it. I can put that bill in. I can grow it. Kind of force that in. But I think more of this is going to be helpful with the chest. So I'm going to keep that there. And then I can get rid of this bill. And if I ever decide I want it again, I have that, that reference. I can always bring it to delete. Uh, just delete the delete key. Okay, so what if you wanted to like multiply that same image? Like so, command C, command V? Uh, it's always command J. So so this image, if I want to duplicate it, it's layer 9 right now. Watch what happens above layer 9 when I hit command J. It just makes multiple copies. And then I can just use the move tool. move them all, and then just delete when I want to delete them. Yeah, so Command-J to duplicate. It can du duplicate a whole layer, or it can duplicate just your selection. Oh, man, I've been sitting here for so long. <laughs> yep, it helps. So repeat it a lot so you remember. All right, so that's my head. Is that pretty? No. It's not welded. It's not cleaned. It's not sealed. But... I've got all the components I need for my head. So I'm going to close that folder and I'm going to move on to the next part, which is the chest. So I've already started the chest, but these are my other components for the chest. So now I'm going to move that one out of the head group, outside of it, and I'm going to select all the ones that are for the chest by holding down Command having them all highlighted, put them into a group. And I'm going to put these on top of the head, and this is the chest. So this is like the axles of the car, you know, the drivetrain of the car, the suspension, the thing that supports the engine, this supports the head. So let's cut these parts out. Let's layer them up. I have them roughly cut. Now I'm going to just kind of roughly place them. And the one that doesn't fit right now is the bumblebee. So this is how I see the bumblebee fitting. Command T, make it big, and then right click. Let's warp it a little. Let's push it a little towards the front. And use that fuzziness because it's, it's cool lighting. It's an interesting texture. And then this one, that's going to be helpful, but I'm going to have to adjust the lighting and everything. So I've got the head and I've got the chest. What's next? The pelvis and the wings, right? So the wings are kind of their own thing. They're going to go behind the chest. 
and actually behind the head as well. So here are the wings, here are the wings. So I'm going to put both of those layers, hold down command, put them in their own group. This is just to help organize the shop floor. Put them under the head. So move that whole group under the head. Move them. Place them. And instead of growing them, because the wings are about the right size for my sketch, all of this stuff is a little too big. This is what I love about doing it with these groups. I can select both groups by holding down Shift or Command. And then I can do Command T to the whole group. And now I can just scale all of this down to fit my sketch, to fit within my parameters, right? So I don't want to make it so, so big that it becomes hard to use. I want to be in control of how I use it. Okay, now I'm going to make those wings to fit. So now I can bring this and bolt everything onto that chassis of my sketch. So, yeah, I kind of like that angle a little bit more. But it would help the silhouette if I can separate out the wing from the snout. So I'm going to tilt it. Use transform, the same tools we were using for our exercises. And I want to find those shoulder joints, right? And I want to play with that perspective. Maybe hold down shift and just tweak it a little bit. Maybe distort it and just tug it up a little bit on this side. Down a little bit on that side. All the connections are there. It still will match my skeletal template. It will be structurally sound. Okay, now those are those are cool wings. They're black. I wanted to add to them these white wings. Layer them on top. And similarly, I'm going to grow them just a little bit, and then maybe distort them. So they're all connecting in the right place. Maybe distort and tilt it down a bit. Like so. Okay, last I have the legs. The legs are already kind of in place, so I'll just label that layer the legs. And those are a low priority. I also have ideas for a new tail, but this is enough. This is plenty to work with. Now that I've grouped everything onto my sketch, now I can actually save memory by taking down with my crop tool and just cropping a little bit closer. So this is a step you don't need to post, but this is where you need to get before we can move on. And since we only have 10 minutes left, this is... I'm going to turn off my guides and I'm just going to do a quick screen grab just to remind you where we are today. To rough place and then I'll post that to canvas. So the rough placing of elements. Once you have that, we can start cleaning it up. So I'm going to start with the head. And what do I do before I do refined cutouts? Do you guys remember from the landscape? Has to do with image adjustments. Yeah, I want to play with levels, color balance, maybe hue saturation before I do these clean cutouts. So I'm going to start with this snout because that's definitely a focal point. right? So I'm going to click on that alligator snout, crocodile snout. I don't remember which. And then say image adjustment levels. Play with the midtones. We did this a ton last class with our landscape, right? I can deaden the highlights a little bit because they're a little strong. I can increase the contrast a tiny bit. Okay, now my favorite is the color temperature. I want to make it feel like it's lit in the same way. 